Okay, let me go to history, bubonic plague, history. Wow. Now check this out. It says the Black Death or the bubonic plague, also known as the uh, pal a pa palace pal pestilence, the great mortality of the plague was a bubonic plague pandemic occurring in western Eurasia and North Africa from 13... Who was living in North Africa? Jake. Who was living in Europe, especially uh, Spain? Jake. So our thousand years were up, so the Most High had to cut us down. If the Most High didn't cut us down, and the number that was... The number of people that were taken was up to, some say, 75 million... Others say 200 million. It says, uh, it said in North Africa from 1346 to 1353, it is the most fatal pandemic recorded in human history, causing the death of 75 to 200 million people peaking in Europe from uh, 13, I said 1346 to 1353, peaking in 1347 to uh, 1351. Uh, so we're talking, uh, so we're talking about seven years. Six to seven years. Because there's a thing called um, herd immunity. The ones, the weak ones are going to die, the babies, the newborns are going to die, the old people are going to die, the sick people are going to die, and the ones that remain have, are usually of a certain age and they have a strong immune system. So if there, there's no cure for it, eventually it'll, it'll die off. It'll get the weak ones. That's what happened with the so-called, the C-19, so-called, right? So this is history right here. There's so many directions you can go. But if you if you notice, if you notice that uh, when did okay it was the bubonic plague took place 1346-1347 when um, Constantine the Great sat on the throne and became the 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 ruler of two realms that was in a uh, 325. So from that starting point, we got a little we got an extra. We had got about an extra, extra 20 years. So it was around that time. We came into power. This man started going down. He was put down. The Dark Ages. Esau doesn't want to talk about the Dark Ages. They said the Dark Ages was a sad time. Why did they say that? Because they were on the bottom and we was on the top. So who sent that plague? Who sent that plague? The most I sent that plague. Because why? Because he looked at his divine watch and he said, okay, now it's time to bring my people back down and put the curses back on them and to bring this people, the Edomites, up. Esau came up because the most I put the spirit on this man to come up in power. The most I guided this man to do what he's doing today. So now he's going down. So you know what I'm going to do? Let me, let me, uh, I'm going a little long. Let me just read this and then I'll and then I'll close. Okay, so it says, well I started reading it. It says uh Bartolome de la Casas among Los Los Casas most direct excuse me successes in in this creed or belief the vision of the Indian destiny as a Jewish I got maybe I gotta read on top. Let me let me come come up here. It says, and I'll show you the page. It says the same can be said for the new Christian racist Christian. Christianity is a racist religion. Vocab Malone is a racist religion of geo geographical discovery the creed the creed we might call 
Colombian. Colombian was a, was a famous name, Columbus, which we have seen in various early manifestations and which has now found its marks in Bat Bartolome de la Casas, Bartolome de la Casas, among La Casas, most direct successes in this creed, in this belief, the vision of the Indian de destiny as a Jewish one is far more explicit, for they will see the new world natives as what? As descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. Lacasis, Las Casas evidently did not share this view, nor is there any direct evidence that He consequently perceived the Indians in terms of the historic condition of what? Of Jews in new Christians and new Christians. But the age of the Inquisition was, look up Inquisition, characterized by concealed motives and indirect modes of expressions, and if Los Casas did not explicitly attack the dreaded tribunal in his, in his brief of relation, the effect upon Europe, and this goes into something else, but the key point is, he says, he says, the Indian's destiny as a Jewish one is far more explicit for they will see the new world natives as descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. So they, when they saw him, they said, these are the Israelites. And there's many, let me do this. Let me go to one more. This is not it. Okay, I believe it's right here. This is page. That was page 164. This is page 168 of Lost Tribes and Promised Land. Okay, Eliot's sense of the deep lying affinities between the Indian language and Hebrew. Between the Indian language and Hebrew, because they found out that these Indians in America spoke Hebrew. Between the Indians and the Jewish spirit. Now they're talking about the Israelite spirit. So the question is. How in the hell can they speak a Jewish language? Because they're, they're Israelites. This mode at, at its height is vividly conceived in a pamphlet describing Eliot's activities that was written in London in 16, 1649 by our old friend Edward... Uh, that's not saying nothing. Let me jump down to here. It says, uh, it says, Mo modern writers and men of great depth, of, in other words, knowledgeable men, and ability to resolve the first what became of the ten tribes of Israel. The second is what family, tribe, kindred, or people it was the first planted and afterward filled that, that vast and long unknown country of America. It was the Israelites. So Esau knew this. The historians, the religious leaders, they knew when they came over here, when Christopher Columbus came over here, they knew that they were Israelites. They knew that they were going to encounter the, the ten lost tribes. Let me jump down to here. 
Okay, so it goes on and says, of the ten lost tribes, Manasseh, which is that's not the tribe of Manasseh, the man named by the name of Manasseh, had had answered that at least some of them were in America. And and Winslow, who who had himself often observed customs among the Indians, the Americans, the natives, of a purportedly Judaic character. That's what James Adair said when he when he traded with him. He said they, he said there were certain words. He said the word for fire they would call ash, which is Hebrew for fire. They would call on Yahweh. Their customs was that of the ancient Hebrews. So anyway, I'm going to close. But if you can't get the book, it's a, it's a long read, a lot of information in there. I'm going to say Shalom.